right. Good morning, good morning, good morning, everyone. Welcome, welcome, Roger. Welcome, Roni, Paulette, Nicholas. Ah, Julie's here today. Judge, welcome, welcome, welcome. Ken, welcome, welcome. Good morning. Good morning, Dr. Judge. Amen. Good morning. That, okay. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Yes. Years ago, there was a production at church that called Glimpses of Heaven. All right. Can I tell you, Josie? Sorry. Can I tell you, Rooney? That hit, that song is yes. so unbiblical. It is so erroneous. So let me correct that because um, the volume is low. What vo My volume is low? Hold on. Let me check my volume. I see something to my body, Miss Low. Nicholas, my body, Miss Low. Are you hearing me now, Nicholas? My body, am I right? Yeah, my body, good. Okay, good. Thank you, Roger. Thank you, Roger. So, good morning, Facebook Live. Good morning. So, before, um, sorry, close your camera. Close your mics. Close your mics. So, I give feedback. Close your mics. All right, good. So, we were just playing a hymn. That, okay, Nicholas, that's better. Okay, good. We were just playing a song that says, uh, um, oh, you know, I got a vision of glory, and when I entered into the city, I, I opened the gates of the city, and I went in, and the angels came to greet me, and when the angels greeted me, they, 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 I said to the angels, I want to see Jesus, because he's the one who died for me. I don't want to see Abraham. I don't want to see Jacob. Just carry me to Jesus. No, that is biblically incorrect. The Bible makes it very clear in Revelation and Thessalonians, Everybody listen to Dr. Dead right now, right? That Jesus shall come to the earth like a shout, like with a trumpet. And the dead in Christ shall rise first, and those who are alive shall meet him in the air. And Jesus takes us to the heavenly Canaan. So we have to be careful when people come out with these songs or emotions. Because remember, music, music bypasses the frontal lobe and it goes to the back of your brain now. Music goes to the emotion. That's why the devil uses it a lot. And so when I'm in church, or when I'm in, listening to any song that is supposed to be a, 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 a Christian song, I listen to the words before I get attached to the music. Because the devil, if you remember very carefully, in Isaiah 14, he was the, he, he's big with trumpet, right? He was the head of the, 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 the music band in heaven. Satan played. In that department, more than any department, the one called music. Can he understand how people respond to music? So we're not going to go to no heaven and open no gate and ask, let me see Jesus. No such thing. The Bible is very clear. The Lord comes for his children. Amen. Good morning, everybody. Good morning. Good morning. Welcome to Facebook Live. So we're going to ask um, Brother Roger to do our opening prayer. And Roger, mm -hmm. I want you to also pray for the donors. So I'm kind of shifting around. I listen this morning. You're going to pray for everybody on the platform, Facebook Live, YouTube, those who listen to the video in the future, and all the donors and the supporters of the ministry. One prayer this morning. Go ahead, Brother Roger. Let's pray. What a friend we have in Jesus. All our strings and grief to be here. What a privilege to carry everything to God in prayer. A righteous, loving, compassionate Father. Here we are once more in your presence. You say we are your children, two or three are gathered in your name, touching anything you are in the midst of bless. Your people gather together on this platform. We know you are here. And we know your presence will be with us through the power of your Holy Spirit this morning. Lord, as we come from the east and from the west and from the north and from the south, to join with you as guests and to dwell in your Father's house, we pray this morning that whatever you have in store for us, O oh God, that you will grant it unto us according to your will. We pray for every single person who are lying and who will come up now and in the future. We pray that this medium in which your word will go forth will not be locked away, but it will go to the bones of earth history. And that 
men and women all over the world will hear your voice and to make a decision for you and for time and for eternity. We pray for those who you have put in their spirit to help with the financial and in whatever way they can to enhance this ministry. We pray, Heavenly Father, for our rich blessings upon them. We pray, Lord, that they will not think of what they are giving and to get weary in what they are doing, but they will give because you have blessed them. You say it's a blessing to give than to receive. And sometimes you bless others for us to be blessed. And so, Lord, we ask you this morning that you will put in their spirit to continue to give in what shape or form they may be able to do to enhance this ministry. We pray, Heavenly Father, for your servant this morning, who is standing in the gap. We know that in these last days, message from you are not popular. For your people love things that is really popular to them and to make them feel good. For you sending message that will stir our conscience, stir our spirit up to know that, oh God, we need to shake off what need to be shaken off, and we need to put on what needs to be put on. Sometimes it's painful. Sometimes it's sorrow to the heart. But you know what best for us. And so, Lord, we ask you this morning that you help us to receive this message with a heart of humility, a heart of love, a heart that will always urging and longing for your righteousness. Help us, Lord, as we, as we sit at your feet to listen to you this morning. Lord, our sitting will not be in pain. Life will be touched. Life will be changed. Life will be converted. And life will sign up for the Christian Jubilee. Bless this ministry that it will go from, go to the four corners of this earth, over 8.1 billion people, that they will hear your calling. Because we know, Lord, based on the word of God, based on the word of the Holy Scripture, that we are living in the end time. We are living in the very closing moment of earth history. And you say you will not come back to this earth until the gospel reach to the poor God. Help us, Lord, that this two hour effort will reach to others who are dying and searching for righteousness that they will hear and come to know you who is life eternal. Continue to bless your daughter. Touch her from the crown of her head to the sole of her feet. We are very special where I ask you, know, Lord, to stand within her. Touch her lips. Touch her brain. Help her, Lord, not to just speak word because she can't speak. But she will speak as the Holy Spirit gave her utterance. We pray that you will give her that greatness, that boldness, as you have given to the disciples. We know that criticism will come from every corner kind of life, but he that, in, he that dwelleth in the presence of you will always continue to get criticism from the enemy. For we know we are protected under your shadow of the Almighty. Yes. Thank you for hearing our prayers this morning. Bless this waiting congregation. We will ask that you give the wind, the word, the wind, a mighty word this morning as the word comes. It will roll down on our heart, it gives us a heart like a mighty street. And our sins will rush away, and you will place us with your robe of righteousness. Thank you for hearing our prayers this morning. Whatever I fail at asking you, Lord, fail not to grant them to me, to us. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 Praise the Lord. Closing cameras, please. Close all cameras, please. I, I. That is my brother, Roger Walker. Now we are together on William's Family and Friends, uh, a ministry that God has raised up over three years ago. And I joined him about maybe 11 months ago or so. And I tell you, it is such a blessed ministry. Roger uh, presents on a Friday morning, John uh, on a Thursday morning, Judy goes, have a little talk with Jesus on a Sunday morning. And I'm gonna invite all of you to join us this Sunday morning as Judy will be doing, have a little talk with Jesus. It's a, it's a wonderful ministry. 
I, I started this online program through the William Sunday and Friends. And the hymn of praise I want to play now, Julie was the one that gave it to me. So Jules, can you just please give everyone the password for William Sunday and Friends? What's the password? I don't remember all time. Just give them, please. Julie? All right. Okay, I'm going to put it in the chat. All right, so put it in the chat, yes. So I'm inviting everyone, you um, Facebook Live, I'm inviting everyone on the platform to join us Sunday morning where we're going to have a, have a little talk with Jesus, Williams, family, and friends. My darling cousin Judy is here, and I'm so happy because she, normally she's busy, she's not here, but this hymn that I'm going to play, she gave it to me, and every Friday morning I play to open the program. Love you, Jules. Thank you so very, very much. Praise the Lord. Can I have the opening hymn, please? Close your cameras, please. I want every camera closed.
loves us desperately. And you know, when Adam and Eve sinned in the Garden of Eden, and Adam, who loved God so much, and he would be meeting God, him and his wife, in, the, in his beautiful garden home, and they used to have a wonderful time together. But after sin, Adam was hiding from God. And God went for Adam. God said, Adam, where are thou? He called Adam, where are thou? Adam said, we heard your voice and we were afraid. Brothers and sisters, to this day, God is still running us down. He's still saying, Roger, where are thou? Judy, where are thou? Michael, where are thou? Winsome, where are thou? Ronnie, where are thou? Deborah, where are thou? Pidis, where are thou? He's still calling his children, where are thou? He, he, the devil stole the love relationship. The devil don't want your house and he carry a monument. I'm not used to him. He's, he's stealing your faith and trust in your creator God. He's stealing that love relationship. And that him is, means more to me than anything. Everywhere I go when I start my presentations, Jesus, blessed Jesus. That's how I start my presentation. So this morning, welcome everybody those who came after. Welcome, it's good to have you all. We are going to be looking at processed sugar. Processed sugar is destroying your health. And I, as always, I always pray and ask the Lord what to present each Friday. And as I go through doing the presentations, I normally emphasize a lot about coming off the meat, coming off the meat, coming off the meat. But we've got to understand that there's something worse than meat, which is the processed sugar. And so this morning, welcome Jesus Christ, the great physician, invites you, your health in review. Episode 39, Judy, we're at episode 39. I remember when you and I did the first one together. Virtual discussion, uh, processed sugar. Free of cost, we don't charge for the presentations because Jesus' blood already paid the price. Jesus provides everything we need. I was talking to a pastor, a friend of mine recently. He's a fellow worker and he works all in the churches. And he was saying, boy, Debs, in 20 years, I've been working as a Bible worker for, the, for this church. My salary has never moved past $35,000. And I said to him, praise the Lord. And he said, praise, I say, praise the Lord. 20 years, God has sustained you, your wife, and your daughter on $35,000 a month. And I know people who are earning $350,000 per month and then can't meet their bills. God will take your little and swell it. God will expand it because God must. Earth can't understand it. Praise the Lord. So when we work for the Lord, we don't worry about money because God will bring favor to you that you can't even begin to understand. Now remember, brothers and sisters, on this platform, we're doing education. I am not your personal doctor on the platform, so understand the information provided in this program is designed for educational purposes only and reflects the biblical lifestyle designed by God for our health and happiness. <laughs> The information presented herein is not to be used as medical advice or to diagnose or treat disease. If you want that, you have to come into the office. Rather, it reflects the convictions of Bible-believing Christians in regard to our biblical understanding of how to cooperate with God in the work of healing, which he promised to do. Therefore, the use or misuse of any information contained herein is at the sole risk and discretion of the user and Dr. Dev's Institute of Health Life Health and Foods Wellness Center is not liable for any negative effect or worthy of praise for any positive results. For diagnosis, treatment, or any other procedure, including surgical medical advice, seek a doctor. Brothers and sisters, if you want healing, seek Jesus Christ, the great physician. Praise ye the Lord. Because it is God who made it very clear as he took his children out of Egypt. They were there for over 400 years. He takes them through from their, their slave masters. He takes them through the Red Sea. Moses is leading as a physical body, but his God is the leader. And they came to Marah. The Bible says the water was bitter. Moses went to God. God said, Moses, through put the shrub in the water, and the water became sweet. So even in a world where there's pollution and the water is being polluted, understand that God can clean up anything if we trust and obey. God turned to the people and God said, if thou wilt diligently hearken to the voice of the Lord thy God, and will do that which is right in his sight, and will give ear to his commandments, and keep all his statutes, I will put none of these diseases, close your cameras please, I will put none of these diseases upon thee, which I have brought upon the Egyptians, for I am the Lord 
that healeth thee. Bless the Lord, O my soul. We have a God who is our creator, sustainer, and he's our healer. He's our doctor. So we come to you this morning from Life Health and Foods Ministries, Life Health and Foods Wellness Center, and Dr. Debs Institute of Health. We are presently located at shop number 74, Springville Avenue, Kingston 10. And if you want to contact us, you simply call 876-326-4650, 876-306-4280, Our website, www.lhfministries.org. Praise the Lord. So our mission is very, very clear. We are here to train medical missionaries for Jesus, build health reform educators for Jesus, and make health disciples for the honor and the glory of God. That is my mission until the day I die, and we're very happy to do it. So we go and we're on mission for the Lord. We do presentations all over the world, working with organizations, working with pastors, working with different groups, bringing everybody to Jesus. The focus of this our platform is to inform everybody that Christ is coming back soon and he wants healthy disciples for his honor and for his glory. Our book ministry continues. Your health, your word of encouragement, your health upon a prayer. Every Monday morning, we do a presentation and it's aired on Dr. Deb's YouTube channel. So every Monday, you can go and look and you'll see a new um, video uploaded guiding you on all the different diseases, how to use herbs safely natural remedies for the honor and for the glory of God. Clothes and shoes drive continues. Our deal that bread to the hungry campaign continues. When the patients come to the office, when friends come to visit me, whomever we ask them to bring in healthy um, plant-based meals, the peas and the beans, the nuts, the seeds and the grains. And we have adopted a Harbor Heights SDA church and up to June of this year, every Friday, a, ba a bag, a box of healthy food goes out to that community. Harbor Heights is a very poor community in Jamaica, near to Harbor View. And so we are feeding them. We send the food to the church and the church distribute to the community. And we are helping. So we're thankful. We have a project for Healthy Children for Jesus Christ Feeding Program. Thanks to our donors, supporters in ministry. We are presently are supporting the Tom's River Seventh-day Adventist Church where we're ensuring that on a Sabbath when they're there that the children are being fed healthy. We're teaching them about food, healthy food and how to be healthy for the honor and the glory of God. I see when you teach the children, the children go home and they teach the parents. When you teach the children, the children start learning. I don't want the back juice. I don't want the box juice. I want the healthy food. You teach the babies, they learn and they go home and tell their mommies and daddies that they want the healthy fruits they want the healthy food. So we have Tom's River and we're also supporting the Harbor Heights with the same project. So on a Sabbath when the children come, no more snacks, no more junk food, no more street streaks, no more biscuit. When they come, they're getting their fruits. Our babies are getting their fruits. And as you can see, the Harbor Heights Church is a poor church, not a very poor community. But they are filled with the Spirit of God and they are making a difference. So it doesn't matter if you're born in a um, Nazareth, right, as um, Philip, um, uh, Nathaniel said, can any good thing come from Nazareth? Jesus was born in a very, very poor community. Your place of birth does not determine your destination, right? And so wherever you're planted, wherever you're born, Jesus Christ can use you. So we have started, we have the next course coming up in the Institute, Cancer, Causes, Prevention, and Natural Remedies. Of all the courses I've done so far, this one, is one I'm taking more serious than anything else. Why? Because for every five phone calls that come into this office, four of them are cancer cases. For every five calls that come into this office asking for help, four out of five is cancer. Right? We have breast cancer, prostate cancer, multiple myeloma, cervical cancer, lung cancer. I'm reading from my report. Right? We have colon cancer, non-Hodgkin's lymphoma, Hodgkin's lymphoma, gastric cancer, stomach cancer, osteosarcoma, bone cancer, right? Carcinoid uh, tumors, brain tumors, ovarian cancer, lymphoma, cancer of the spleen, throat cancer, neoblastomia, leukemia, gallbladder cancer, thyroid cancer, kidney cancer, liver cancer, 
serum cancer, um, metastatic melanoma, tongue cancer, we have a uh, hand cancer, right? We have pancreatic cancer, sinusitis cancer, gut cancer, neck cancer. We have persons coming here with pelvic cancer. We have uh, renal cancer, vaginal cancer, anal cancer, tumors of the eye, oral cancer, pituitary adenoma. We have melanoma, right? Uh, we have appendix cancer, pulmonary cancer, a B cell lymphoma, T cell leukemia lymphoma. That is why I am launching this course. So just in case Facebook Live, those who will see this video in the future, you don't think I don't need this course because I don't have cancer. I'm telling you, every single one of you must register for this course. Do you know how many people come in my office and tell me 10 years ago I saw your, your video, Dr. Debs, I am no diagnosed with cancer? Or five years ago I saw it. Or my mother sent it to me. Or my cousin sent it to me. Six years ago, one, one person said, Dr. Debs, from the very first day you made the first video, I saw it and now I have cancer. So the course is starting on June 3rd. It's going to run for 77 weeks, right? And we have three packages. So person said, Dr. Debs, I would love to come to your class. But at the time when you're doing I am at class, that does not stop you because we have a group called Essential. Cancer Care Essential. They don't have to come to the classes, right? Everything is uploaded to the learning platform and you study at your own pace. We have Cancer Care advanced those persons are coming to the classes and then we have cancer care mastery those are persons who have cancer and they want me to work with them for 30 days a month and write a program for them to use natural remedies as they're going through their cancer so please go to www.drdebshealth.com forward slash cancer and register for the program now if you want to register locally manual registration call the office 876-326-4650 and we will do a manual registration brothers and sisters i repeat nobody should miss this course we have one in four jamaicans coming down with cancer we have one in three cancer has now moved from being an old person disease so 15 to 39 is the group that we're seeing the highest incidence of especially colon cancer, stomach cancer, and pancreatic cancer. So get your children, get your mother, get your father, get your brother, get them registered for this course. Today, we're looking at sugar destroying your health. How sugar destroys your health? Over 60 ailments are linked to sugar, from cancer to arthritis to obesity, to heart disease, to dental problems, to gallstones, to diabetes, all linked to this poison called processed sugar. Now I'm going to show you a video because I realize many people don't know how sugar is made. So I'm going to show you a video first so you can understand how the processed sugar is made and then we're going to talk about why it is so dangerous to the body. Let us start with a video first. These machines harvest the cane by cutting it at the base. The heavy lengths of cane drop into the base of a conveyor, which feeds them into the transport bin that follows alongside. At the mill, trucks empty their load onto a receiving table. It feeds a belt conveyor that takes the cane through two separate washes. The cane must be as clean as possible for extracting the juice. But first, the cane's hard structure is broken down inside this crusher, where rotating hammers break the cane into small pieces. A conveyor loads it into a milling tandem, designed to extract the sweet juice from the crushed cane. In this milling tandem, the cane passes through a series of five or more consecutive mills. Large cylinders compress the cane fiber. The juice pours out of the milling tandem and diverts into a channel away from the bagasse, the dry pulp that remains after extracting the juice. A worker supervises the operation at each of the mills. 
A vat collects the juice that flows from the top and bottom of the mills. Now that the juice is extracted from the sugar cane, it's time to process it. However, before it's turned into sugar crystals, a sample goes through a series of tests at the sugar mill's laboratory. They add a thickener that binds to impurities in the juice and then filter it to make it clear and clean. Then it's poured into a polarimeter, a machine that measures the concentration of sugar. The juice from the mills now falls through this 10 meter high tower as sulfur dioxide vapors rise through it. This process, known as sulfitation, bleaches the juice. Then it flows through a device that measures its pH level. While at a separate vat, workers add powdered lime to water, preparing a solution to which they will then add the juice. An agitator mixes the cane juice and lime solution for about six hours to complete a process called alkalization. It regulates the juice's pH level and helps clarify it. In reaction to the lime, the juice's color changes from brown to yellow. Next, the juice goes into these clarifier tanks. It takes over two hours for the juice to settle and for the impurities to fall to the bottom of the tank. A sample taken from the tank shows how the sludge collects at the bottom, while the clarified juice collects at the top. There's still quite a way to go before it's transformed into the stuff that goes into your tea. Workers filter the residue, known as mud, from the clarifier tanks to extract any remaining sugar. There's no waste here. The mud will fertilize the cane fields and the bagasse left over will be burned as fuel. The clarified juice collected from the clarifier tanks now boils in a series of evaporators. This brings the concentration of the sugar in the juice up from 15% to 60. Then the juice collects in 15 ton tanks to clarify even more. Any sediment left in the juice floats to the top. A rotating paddle skims this residue off to the sides of the tank. These tanks produce a type of serum that goes on for still more processing. Workers now pour sucrose crystals suspended in alcohol into the syrup. This milky solution binds to the sugar present in the syrup and helps draw it out. Next, it all boils in large vacuum pans, forming sugar crystals. As the water in the syrup boils away, workers regularly check to see how the sugar is crystallizing. The goal? To produce a thick crystallized paste known as masquite. It then goes into a high-speed centrifugal machine to remove the sugar crystals from the uncrystallized syrup. Inside, the sugar spins at 1,200 revolutions per minute. This action draws the molasses to the outer shell of the machine, while the crystals remain in the inner basket. Sprays of water wash the crystals, then the water is drawn out so only the crystals remain. This centrifuge draws out moisture from the sugar, just like a washing machine on spin cycle dries your clothes. Next, a conveyor belt carries the sugar crystals out of the centrifuge. This mill produces raw sugar, which has more molasses and is unbleached, and plantation white sugar, which has less molasses and is bleached a brilliant white.
The sugar on the conveyor now goes into a large dryer. Hot air blows into this dryer to bring the sugar's humidity level down to 0.02%. That's standard for table sugar. The dried sugar pours out from the dryer into a bag on the scale. These All right, tell me which part was scarier. If you see those in face in my office, what was scarier for you? The, the bleach or was it the powdered lime? Or was it what the boiling part of it? Or was it the sucrose crystals? The sucrose. All right, that is how white sugar is made. They bleach it and bleach it. Now, when that enters your body, it's poison. So just at the beginning, when they took the sugar cane and they wash it, and it went to the machine, and you have the, the sugar juice, the cane juice, mm -hmm. that's fine. But, that, but, but that's fine, you know, because sugar cane juice is okay. Right. But after that, do that now, the bleaching starts. The, the, the lime, the powdered lime starts. The boiling starts. And then the sucrose crystals, it becomes a poison. Father in heaven, we are so grateful to you for your son Jesus. Your son is the head of the human race, the last Adam. Jesus will not sit down in heaven and allow the devil to destroy us down here. Jesus keeps sending out message to his servants to warn the world of what the devil is doing. Today on this platform, you are unveiling Satan in this industry of processed sugar and how he's taking the lovely sugar cane that you gave us with minerals and how he converts it to processed white sugar to kill your children. Killing off millions all across the world. Jesus, we love you for loving us. Now we ask for the full anointing of your Holy Spirit over every listener in the hearing of the voice of your daughter. And I pray, darling, wonderful Jesus, that today some of your children will go into their cupboards as I did in 2012. Open the cupboards and dump the garbage. Dump it. Oh Lord, thank you so much for your love and your protection. In Jesus' name we pray with thanksgiving and love. Amen. Amen. Do you want a clear brain? Quoting from Helen G. White in the book Councils on Diet. Can you close your cameras, please? All right. You know, I think I'm going to go to a point, Josie, where I stop allowing persons to come on the platform and just do the video and upload it. Jacqueline McKenzie, close your camera, please. Maybe if I call the lady, you'll know who I'm talking about. Close your cameras. Thank you very much. Keep your cameras closed. Thank you very much. <laughs> All right, now. So, quote, looking at counsels on diet and foods, God said to us through his servant, no one can have good digestive powers and a clear brain who will eat largely of sweet cookies and cream cake and all kinds of pies and partake of a great variety of food at one meal. Whenever I go to church, whichever church I go to, this I see every week. They load up the church, they load up the place with all of these cheap cake well, that they buy from these supermarkets all over Jamaica now, poisoning themselves, right? But God says, no one can have a good digestive power and a clear brain. Your sugar food affects your brain. God says through his servant, Sugar, the same thing you saw a while ago with them bleach and put on all kind of sinting, sinting, sinting. Sugar causes fermentation in the stomach. You, the stomach and the brain are attached. You can't separate them, you know. They're attached. Sugar causes fermentation in the stomach and this clouds the brain and brings peevishness. What does peevishness mean, Dr. Debs? It means irritability. It means bad mood. It means hostility into the disposition so take a stock of your behavior take a stock of your children's behavior and take a stock of your your community and understand the more you keep going to the supermarket and buying all these things laced with that poison sugar that just we just saw the video understand this is what happened the peevishness the irritability no wonder husband and wife can live in harmony no wonder children are behaving so badly when I was growing up as a child in Jamaica, my mother was poor. She couldn't afford to buy these things. So our snack was go outside, climb the mango tree, get a mango. Climb the, the, um, the apple tree and get an apple. 
Now our children are not climbing anything. They're not even outside playing anymore. And you're stuffing them with all of these things, with sugar causing fermentation. Then half of your money now is spent carrying them to the doctor because they're sick. This morning, God is opening your eyes, mommies and daddies, children. God says, through the book, Counsels and Dyes and Foods, again, sweet breads and cookies we seldom have at our table, said Helen G. White. She said, we seldom have that at our table. The less of sweet foods that are eaten, the better. These cause disturbances in the stomach and produce impatience and irritability in those who accustom themselves to their use. So I have vegans and vegetarians who are coming to my office and they're very, very sick. And Dr. Williams, I have not touched meat in years. You see, when I audit them, whew, they love the sweet cakes. They love the sweet biscuits. Oh, they love the candies. And that is where it is coming from. The devil is coming in. Let's look at the organs of the body and what sugar is doing to it. The brain. Sugar impacts memory and learning skills. The brain begins to crave the sugar daily. Sugar contributes to the brain not functioning properly, which leads to depression and anxiety. So here comes somebody now who's having depression. And they're going to a psychologist or a psychiatrist or some counselor. Not trained in nutrition, don't understand about how food affects the body. And they're going to put you on a drug now, saying that you're suffering from depression. When it's coming from your diet. Are you seeing that? The lungs. Sugar modulates the respiratory system activity. Which negatively impacts our breathing. Sugar is a leading cause of asthma. So I have patients I work with who are asthmatic. And by God's grace, we get them off the pump. By changing their diet. And they're saying, Dr. Des, I can't believe that just by changing my diet, the asthma gone, yeah, because it was poisoning your blood. And the blood is going through the lungs, carrying all of the garbage from the sugar-laden foods that you're eating. What about your kidneys? Sugar can increase kidney size and produce pathological changes in the kidneys. Sugar leads to forming, formation of kidney stones. Sugar damages the kidneys, right? And sugar affects the filtration system in your kidneys. Talking about on dialysis machine, talking about on medication for kidney disease. Watch your diet. Your plate, your plate. What about your heart? Excessive sugar consumption lead, leads into sugar converting into fat. So when you're consuming anything high in sugar, when your body can utilize it, it converts it to fat. The fat elevates the level of cholesterol. So now you know why persons who are vegan can also have high cholesterol, though they're not eating animal products, right? It's coming from the excess sugar that's being converted into fat, and that fat elevates the cholesterol, causing heart attack, stroke. Also, sugar can lead to heart disease. But what about the skin, Dr. Debs? Sugar causes the skin to age by producing inflammation that break down collagen, resulting in wrinkles. Dr. Debs is 53 years old. I don't have one wrinkle for my skin. I don't eat them something here, right? I exercise. I drink lots of water. I build the collagen that keeps the elasticity in my skin. So when a wrinkle comes, it'll come years from now. Certainly not in my 50s, right? And I have women coming into my office who are in their 40s and they look like they're 60. And they don't understand it's coming from the hope of sugar. But now you're going to understand this morning. The more sugar you eat, the more likely you will develop insulin resistance, which produces dark patches around the body. What about the liver? Sugar leads to liver disease because your liver has had limited capacity to metabolize, break down the sugar, what are you typing, Joseph? And the rest is turned into liver fat. What are you typing? Oh, okay, all right. Close all cameras. Julian is typing and asking everybody to keep your cameras closed, right? Also, sugar increases the size of the liver. 
sugar. So I have children being brought to me and they have fatty liver disease. And the parents are shocked because generally you're told fatty liver disease come from drinking alcohol. But alas, alas, when you are consuming a lot of sugar, you're feeding it to your children, they can have the same fatty liver disease. So we have the addiction because they can become addicted to the sugar thing, you know. So just like how an alcoholic uh, finds it hard to break off the alcohol. So somebody who's addicted to sugar, it doesn't go so easily. It can contribute to tiredness, um, the cavities in the mouth, the clogged arteries, the heart concerns, metabolic disorders affecting the entire body, weight gain, diabetes, increased appetite is affecting the enzymes in your stomach that should turn off that feeling of hunger, that feeling of being full. The, the sugar turns it off, so you always feel hungry, right? And of course, increase uric acid. So when you come to Dr. Debs with your blood tests and your uric analysis and you're saying, why are all my numbers so high, Dr. Debs? Watch it. It's coming from your junk food, right? Now, sugar causes inflammation in the body. And I want you to walk with me very slowly. Now, to understand its connection with sugar, we have to look at the role of inflammation and what it what it does to the body first you should know that not all inflammation is bad right your body relies on this natural healing process to fight virus and bacteria so a little inflammation is helpful in the body once your immune system begins this repair process you will notice redness warmth or swelling at the site of injury or the infection. Now these, <laughs> these inflammatory responses, which result from short-term damage, typically let up after two or three days. So the body will have an inflammatory response if you're damaged, if you get a hit, right? If there's infection, but short-term. The problem now is the chronic inflammation. On the other hand, consistently have more inflammatory markers. Now we can easily run blood tests to check your inflammatory markers. Researchers have observed higher traces of these markers in those whose diets are high in sugar. Let's take a look at how added sugar coexists with inflammation. Now several reasons explain why too much sugar and inflammation correlate. Listen to me, brothers and sisters. For starters, high sugar intake is linked to weight gain. Carrying excess body fat leads to swelling. Also, once sugar enters the bloodstream, it combines with protein or fat and produces harmful compounds. This end product is linked to what we call oxidative stress and inflammation it's damaging your cells it's damaging your tissue it's damaging your muscles your arteries inside but because if you can see inside your body you think it's okay to eat it high blood sugar causes the body to become what we call insulin resistant and store fat in the abdominal region this type of body fat is widely associated with inflammation in obese persons additionally higher blood sugar causes the body to produce inflammatory um, modules molecules sorry in the central nervous system so the sugar can affect your central nervous system your joints all over your body your eyes your skin your hair everything over the long run chronic inflammation degrades the body's immune system which can have numerous negative effects on the brain some of which are connected with a heightened risk of depression and schizophrenia brothers and sisters i have worked with so many persons over the years who were diagnosed with schizophrenia bipolar disorder depression and i have watched god heal them by changing their diet and lifestyle we just took out all the meat all the processed foods all these highly processed sugar and watch them come back to normal eat too much added sugar eating too much added sugar can damage your body on a cellular level by causing low levels of harmful inflammation 
Studies have found that people who consume around 40 grams of added sugar per day, roughly about an 8 ounce can of cola, one can of soft drink, or six what we call fun size candy bars, learn to read the labels. Look at the back of the listed items and see how much grams of sugar is in what you're eating and what you're giving to the children. Just 40 grams of added sugar show an increased inflammatory marker both immediately after consuming it and over time. Out of control inflammation can create health issues that increase the heart disease, the autoimmune issues, allergies, allergies. Oh, doctor, does I love my ice cream, but it doesn't love you. It's causing the allergies and the sinusitis. The mood disorders, because I remember it affects the brain, chronic pain, digestive problems, fatigue, insomnia, and even cancer. Brothers and sisters, you know, I could stop the class. I could just stop right here and tell all of you, running up and down to these clinics, running up and down to these hospitals, this is where it's coming from. God is trying to warn you. Now, maintaining an anti-inflammatory diet is more than just regulating your sugar intake and eating healthily. So remember, it's more than just the food. Inflammation arises from a variety of factors. You'll also want to monitor lifestyle factors, such as what? Stress, drug medication, and excess fat intake. Those vegetable oils, the trans fats. The stress because we are living as if we are being chased by a lion and the adrenal gland is shooting off cortisol in your bloodstream, right? Because cortisol is a steroid and God never designed for us to be so stressed out. Jesus said in Matthew 6 verse 33, seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness and all the things that you need shall be added unto you. What about the drug medication? I have a book here called The Ministry of Healing by Helen G. White. Everybody by now on this platform knows that Dr. Deb's favorite book, God Told Me, Deborah, 2012, read the book, do what it says and you will be fine. In, on page 44 of The Ministry of Healing, I want to read something to you about drug medication. Now God says, God says through his servant, Helen G. White, right? God says through his servant, page 44, now the chapter is called the physician and educator that's the chapter the physician and educator listen to this it says a practice that is laying the foundation of a vast amount of disease and of even more serious evils is the free use of poisonous drugs talk to any pharmacist and they'll tell you that every single drug in the pharmacy is a poison right it says when attacked by disease Many will not take the trouble to search out the cause of their illness. Their chief anxiety is to rid themselves of pain and inconvenience. So they resort to pain tent nostrums. This is the pharmaceutical stuff. Of whose real properties they know little. Or they apply to a physician for some remedy to counteract the result of their misdoing. But with no thought of making a change, to their unhelpful habits. If immediate benefit is not realized, another medicine is tried, and then another, thus the evil continues. That's what God said to his servant. People need to be taught that drugs do not cure disease. I will read that again. People need to be taught that drugs do not cure disease. It is true that they sometimes afford present relief, and the patient appears to recover as a result of their use. This is because nature has sufficient vital force to expel the poison and to correct the conditions that cause the disease. Health is recovered in spite of the drug, but in most cases the drug only changes the form and location of the disease. Often the effect of the poison seems to be overcome for a time but the results remain in the system and work great harm at some later period i see that every single day in my office so god says as it relates to going an anti-inflammatory disease 
You also need to monitor your lifestyle factors, right? Remember, it's nutrition, exercise, water, sunlight, air, rest, trust in God, right? Such as stress, drug medication, and excess fat intake. Rather than following a specific regimen, this diet focuses on incorporating more fruits and vegetables, whole grains, healthy fats, and plant-based protein. This approach has been shown to reduce the intestinal inflammation and promote overall health you need to learn about nutrition people you need to learn about the impact of what you're eating and how it affects your liver your kidney your blood your lymphatic system your brain you have to learn and take the time out to learn you can't be too busy your body is the only one you have you never get to take care of it now, anti-inflammatory foods can include, for example, green vegetables, the spinach, the kale, the colored green, callaloo, cabbage, etc. The fruits, oranges, kiwi, strawberry, jackfruit, sarapel, soursop, example, right? Cherries, whole grains, the brown rice, the bulgur, the spelt, the, the, um, the rye, etc. The healthy fats, the raw nuts, avocados, extra virgin um olive oil extra virgin coconut oil and the seeds flat seed chia seed sunflower seed sesame seed pumpkin seed you need to learn how to put all of this together to have an anti-inflammatory diet and remember the mastering whole food plant-based cooking course was launched for that i cannot understand how i have over 300 and plus people watching these videos every week on facebook live and youtube and I only see 25 persons register for the course, even when we offer a 40% discount, even when we go as far as say 60% discount, even when we go as far and say, whatever you have, call me, I'm not turning you back. Oh, Dr. Debs, I'm so busy. Now remember, if you are interested in implementing dietary modifications to improve your health, call our expert team at Life Health and Foods Wellness Center, right? No, what I have done, with the Mastering Whole Food Plant-Based Cooking course, I have expanded the time. It's a seven weeks course, so it's gonna run from May 6th to July 22. So it means today you can still register and you still have seven weeks to do the course, okay? www.drdebshealth.com forward slash cooking. All right. Now the inflammation with the sugar in the body the sugar can rewire your brain pathway. Diets full of processed and sugar heavy foods can increase the risk of depression by 58%. We already spoke about skin, but what about your genitals? Excess sugar can impair blood flow, um, upping the risk of erectile dysfunction in men and sexual arousal disorder in women. Ladies, gentlemen, right? The heart inflames the lining of the arteries to the heart and the stroke, the heart attack. We already spoke about the kidney, but what about the joints? High sugar diet pump up the inflammation in the blood, right? And can cause arthritis and joint pains. God said through his servant, Helen G. White, in the book, Counsels on Diet and Foods, far too much sugar is ordinarily used in food. The cakes the sweet puddings. Now I bake puddings, I bake it. There's no sugar in them at all, right? They are substitutes that we can use. When I make my pudding, the sweet potato and the raisins and the dates, I don't need sugar in there, right? I bake, I bake my healthy biscuits and I'm using healthy stuff in there. I use my red banana as a sweetener. Don't need the sugar in there, right? I make jelly and jam. I use flaxseed, pineapple, lemon juice, and honey, and I make my own jam and jelly at home and teach my patients how to do that in the Mastering Whole Food Club Plant-Based Cooking Course. God said to Sister White, especially harmful are the custards and puddings in which egg, milk, and sugar are the three chief ingredients. So when you come back, anything you bake, including the ice cream where you buy at the store, once it has been the milk, the egg, and the sugar, Danger, danger, danger. The free use of milk and sugar taken together should be avoided, says Jesus through his servant. Now, sugar depletes nutritious vitamins and minerals in our body. So not only is sugar empty calories, but when you consume anything, because it has nothing in it, 
your body in order to break it down in your system has to now leach from your system vitamins and minerals in order to break it down that's dangerous magnesium is used to process the sugar and when our blood sugar raises we get a, a surge of insulin and that depletes the zinc so now you know why so many men are suffering from erectile dysfunction they need the zinc down there in addition to this when processing sugar our body uses up potassium chromium and the b vitamins so do you understand why your central nervous system get hit do you understand why your kidneys get hit because the lip, the, the sugar is a is a thief the processed sugar is a thief so rubbing from you the essential minerals that you need for a healthy body a diet high in sugar the fruit juices and the sodas increase the pms all these girls period pain period pain period pain dr debs um just just you know all of these symptoms check it i do not recommend that you go to any store and buy fruit juice but dr debs i came off the store so i go and buy the fruit juice do you know how they make it in those supermarkets right do you know how they boil it and they add um shelf stabilizer to it and then add extra sugar to it it's best to make your own at home right now a person on a diet high in refined sugar may feel any type of physical pain sooner because it's affecting your central nervous system high blood sugar glucose can injure nerves throughout the body brothers and sisters diabetic neuropathy so that's probably so all of the nerves across the body getting damaged diabetic neuropathy is the name of the disease most often damaged nerves in the legs and the feet depending on the affected nerves diabetic neuropathy symptoms include pain numbness in the legs the feet and the hands plus studies show that people who eat or drink a lot of sugar may be more likely to develop um, rheumatoid arthritis causing pain in the joints and i see children coming into my office with joint pains and the parents are taking them to the doctor and they can't they cannot all they're doing is giving the children something to rub on the joint but nobody's addressing the diet of these children god said through his servant sister white i advise the people to give up sweet puddings or custards made with eggs and milk and sugar and to eat the best home made bread both graham and that's just a special uh, flour graham and white with dried or green fruit and let that be the only course for one meal and then let the next meal be of nicely prepared vegetables now in the mastering whole food plant-based cooking course i teach all of this how do you make your own bread i teach you how to do it um how do we do food preparation we don't mix fruits and vegetables in the same meal god told us separate the fruits at one meal with the carbohydrate grains and then have the vegetables at another meal don't combine them and i do food com combination in the course studies indicate that a high a diet high in refined sugar can contribute to hypertension so 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 this is very interesting you know because even as i was putting the powerpoint together and i'm saying you see this is why so many of my patients are coming out with hypertension when they come here because they don't understand how sugar affect high blood pressure because they're taught about what what Josie salt so there's a salt 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 but let's talk about how sugar can cause high blood pressure now looking at this article written by Dr. Knox January this year sugar can raise your blood sugar along with increasing the risk of obesity and diabetes though sodium salt is known to lead to high blood pressure or hypertension sugar also can do so by acting on nitric oxide in our production dr debs what is that let us talk about it how sugar affects your blood sugar walk with me typically people think that think of salt as bad for blood pressure however sugar the processed sugar is also responsible for high blood pressure and a leading cause of it fructose a type of simple sugar raises the level of uric acid in the blood it's not just the meat cause it 
sugar causes it too. Now this inhibits the production of nitric oxide needed to help your blood vessels maintain flexibility. Do you understand that brothers and sisters? So when the levels of nitric oxide are lowered because you're eating the processed sugar, you can experience a rise in blood vessel. Because remember, it's all of these arch, all these veins going all over your body. The sugar can make them become stiffer because it's lowering the nitric oxide that helps your blood vessels to relax and be flexible. Sugar in processed foods are considered a main driver of hypertension, especially the added sugar, rather than those that occur naturally in the fruits or the vegetables or even in milk. So understand we have different types of sugar, right? And we are not talking about the natural sugar in the fruits and the vegetables. We're talking about the added processed sugar. Furthermore, research suggests that sugar intake can actually increase salt sensitivity, leading to the enhanced negative effects of sodium on blood pressure. Do you hear that? So in other words, the sugar makes your body more sensitive to the salt. A 2017 research study, in fact, discovered an association between sugar intake and high blood pressure in older women, and I add, and men. Sugar consumption, therefore, leads to specific impact that can contribute to hypertension. So here you heard it from Dr. Debs today, and very well held, and the doctors coming out and saying, I know it's so funny, because because when I interview even doctors and nurses, you'll never hear a doctor or a nurse tell you that there's an association between processed sugar and hypertension because they don't know. They don't know. All they know is salt. But today you learned as Jesus is trying to open your understanding that the sugar can also cause the hypertension. Everybody know that now. Praise the Lord. Go tell your family. Go tell your friends. Sugar contributes to tooth decay. Now, some dentists will try and challenge me. Say, Dr. Dennis, sugar is not acidic, so it doesn't cause tooth decay. It doesn't cause it. It contributes to it. Here is how. When sugar is consumed, it interacts with the bacteria in your mouth, within the plaque, to produce the acid. Now, this acid is responsible for the tooth decay because it slowly dissolves the enamel, creating holes or cavities in the teeth. Tooth decay can lead to tooth abscess, which may result in the tooth having to be removed. So, it's very important. After you eat a meal, brush your teeth, floss is very important. Drink the water and just simply just take two mouthful and just wash out the mouth, okay? Very important. All right, now, sugar affects your parotid gland right here. So the gland is right here behind your ear. It helps to produce the saliva that helps to start breaking down the food. You know, it's, I lo you know why I love doing these Friday presentations? Because it takes me deeper into study to learn more. Watch this now. The parotid glands are salivary glands that sit in front of the ears. There is one parotid gland on each side of your face. There are many other salivary glands in the lips, the cheeks, the mouth, and the throat. But each makes saliva, right? So these parotid glands, each of them makes approximately 10% of the saliva in your mouth. The more you chew is the more these particular glands produce the saliva. Now remember carbohydrates that are breaking down in the mouth. You need the saliva to mix with the carbohydrate to start that breaking down in the mouth, right? Now, when you consume processed sugar, it damages the glands in your mouth and affects the digestion of your food. You see how dangerous this thing is? All right, what about your intellect? Are your children not learning? Are we stunting their growth because of this sugar? The answer is yes. Excess insulin drops blood glucose very low. It leads after a while to cognitive impairment. Behavioral disorders such as attention deficit disorder, inability to concentrate, 
violent outbursts, urge for alcohol consumption is coming from your high consumption of sugary foods and sugary drinks. So nothing is wrong with your daughter or your son. They don't have a learning disorder. They have a disorder of nutrition. And once you fix it, the body comes back into equilibrium. So we want to advocate a low sugar diet. Superior attention span when you do that. More accurate responses to things around you when you do that. Perform the equivalent of one whole grade, a one whole grade level higher in school when you're feeding the children and when you're eating a low sugar diet, right? Excess calories accelerate mental decline. Study indicates that a higher consumption of calories in middle age accelerates the decline in mental functioning with aging. So as you grow older, your body gets even more damaged and your mental capacity is affected when you're feeding yourself with all these sugary drinks and putting sugar in tea and sugar in coffee and sugar in everything, right? Science, all the evidence are proven high consumption of sugar causes colon cancer or contributes to colon cancer, the rectal cancer, the breast cancer, the ovarian cancer, the uterine cancer, prostate cancer, kidney cancer, cancer of the central nervous system. Why? We showed it earlier why. It affects the cells in your body. What is cancer? Cancer is a mutation of cells because the DNA has been damaged. So when you consume all of these things, it is sweet in your mouth, bitter in your belly, and destructive to your blood and your entire body. God says the free use of sugar in any form tends to clog the system and is not unfrequently a cause of disease. Jesus has not left us in darkness. He has told us from in the 1840s, come off these things, my children. When we look at hidden sugar in all these commercial things in the supermarket, the malty drink, an eight ounce malty drink has 42 teaspoons of sugar. The soft drinks has 12 ounces, has 12 teaspoons of sugar, right? The, the chocolate cake, one slice, a four ounce slice, eight teaspoons, eight teaspoons of sugar, right? Even the fruit pie, you take the fruit, you make a pie, but by the time you add sugar and all of those things, you have spoiled the fruit and now you're poisoning the body. The ice cream, one scoop, has it five teaspoons of sugar. The donut, a glazed donut, four teaspoons of sugar. The jam and the jelly, so I encourage you, brothers and sisters, learn to read your labels. It's very important, right? What about high fructose corn syrup, which is in everything now in the supermarket? Read the labels. Most likely made from genetically modified corn. So on the one hand, it has destruction um, in your body because of the, the fructose uh, corn syrup, but it's also made from the GMO corn, that alone will poison the body. Enzymes used in production are genetically modified. Now compared with regular sugar, the corn syrup is cheaper and sweeter. That is why I find it's in everything now. And it's more quickly absorbed into the body. But eating too much high fructose corn syrup can lead to insulin resistance, obesity, type 2 diabetes, high blood pressure, and many other diseases. Now, when tests are done on these things in the supermarkets, we have found also um, when we test these, the samples that we test, the high fructose corn sugar found, they contain mercury. Why would we find mercury in them? Here's the reason why. It says food adulteration to increase shelf life. So remember you now, these supermarkets would not buy these things if they're gonna spoil in a week or two. They want them to be on the shelf for months and months and even years without spoiling. The only way they can achieve that is that they have to add a certain chemicals to it, like mercury. And that is why when you read the label, it's that mercury is being found in many food that has a high fructose corn syrup. 
Now found in nearly a third of 55 popular brand name food and beverages with high fructose corn syrup is the second, first or second um, highest labeled ingredients. Brothers and sisters, just go in your kitchen right now. Let's take down these things that you have in the shelf. Turn to the back and look at the label. Look at the high fructose corn syrup. Look at the high amount of sugar that you are giving to your children. Even in what they call yogurt. When I go in the supermarket and I take up this salt yogurt and I turn the back and I see how much sugar is in the yogurt and I say, this is poison. It is poison. No gluttony and intemperance. God said to us through his daughter in 1907, we know that the Lord is coming very soon, brothers and sisters. The world is fast becoming as it was in the days of Noah. It is given over to selfish indulgence. Eating and drinking are carried to excess. Men are drinking the poisonous liquor that makes them mad. But God is telling us this morning that what caused the earth to be destroyed in the days of Noah was selfish indulgence. Taking eating and drinking to excess and before Jesus comes, it's going to happen again. And we're seeing it all around us. The world is obese. The world is dying from cancer, diabetes, hypertension, stroke, heart disease. And it's coming from gluttony and intemperance. God says, 1875, gluttony and intemperance lie at the foundation of the great moral depravity in our world. That was written in 1875. God said, Satan is aware of this. And he, Satan, is constantly tempting men and women to indulge the taste at the expense of health and even life itself. I see this in my office every day. Eating, drinking, and dressing. Don't leave out the dressing, you know. Because all them cut up, cut up jeans and then tight up, tight up clothes. All of that affects your health. God says, eating, drinking, dressing are made the aim of life with the whole world. Just such a state of things existed before the flood with Noah in Genesis. And this state of dissipation is one of the marked evidences of the soon close of this earth's history. And that is why every platform I go on, I tell them, you cannot deliver the gospel of health if you're not teaching them about health and wellness. Jesus had a threefold ministry. He, he teaching, healing, and uh, teaching, healing, and uh, preaching. When we go there as evangelists, we have got to take the health message to the people. You can't leave this out. You're teaching them about this great, wonderful Jesus. They have all these lifestyle diseases. And you, pastor, you evangelist, you elder, can tell the people them how to get rid of them diabetes, them high blood pressure. Jesus did it. And as Jesus' disciples, we are to do it. Now in Jesus' days, Paul shadow healed them. Peter shadow healed them. Paul could have lay in body upon them and then get up. In our days, God says, go and teach them how to put away these things because the devil is working miracles in these last days. The devil put the disease upon them and take it off. And they say they have been healed by the Lord. But God says, teach them, teach them. Now it says, and this state of dissipation, what does dissipation mean? Because God said, it is one of the marked evidences of the soon close of this earth's history. Brothers and sisters, cancer will not be going around forever. People dying from disease will not be continuing forever. The devil tempting and causing mayhem will not go on forever. A time has been set by God when Jesus is going to say to the angels who are down here, leading us away from the darkness to the light, it is done. It's done. Read Revelation 14 and 15. The seven last plagues are going to hit earth. And Jesus is trying to... Get his people, Revelation 18, 18, come out of Babylon, my people. Dissipation means 
overindulgence in sensual pleasures, squandering of money, energy, and resources. When I go to the supermarket and I see all these people with all these trolleys, with all this garbage, I tell you, I have to hold back myself because I want to tell them, what are you doing? That's all garbage. You're going to go home and kill yourself and kill the people them. All I can do is pray for them and keep on teaching. Now, in 1 Corinthians 10, 31, the Bible says, Whether therefore he eat or drink or whatsoever he do, do all to the glory of God, brothers and sisters. And I have there sugar cereal. No, no, no. That's not what God meant. What, did, what does God mean? What are we supposed to eat? Go back to the Garden of Eden. Genesis 1, 29. When God made this perfect specimen called Adam, mankind. And God blessed Adam and Eve. In Genesis 1 and verse 29, God, the creator, saying to Adam, the creature, and God said, Behold, I have given you every herb bearing seed, which is upon the face of all the earth, and every tree in the which is the fruit of a tree yielding seed. To you it shall be for meat, meaning food. So when God made our bodies, our bodies were not designed to consume animal flesh. Look at verse 30 of Genesis 1. Verse 30 says, And to every beast of the earth, and to every fowl of the air, and to everything that creepeth upon the earth, wherein there is life, I have given every green herb for meat. And it was so. When God made mankind, God designing our diet, God said even the animals were supposed to eat the green herbs. So man was eating the the fruits and the, the grains and the nuts. The animals, Genesis 1.30, the animals were eating the greens. All right now, so how is it that we are now told to eat the greens? Walk with me to Genesis 3 and verse 18. In Genesis 3 and verse 18, God says, in fact, I'm going to pick it up from verse 17. And unto Adam, God said, because thou hast hearkened unto the voice of thy wife, and hast eaten of the tree of which I commanded thee, saying, Thou shalt not eat of it. Cursed is the ground for thy sake. Sorry. <coughs> In sorrow shalt thou eat of it all the days of thy life. 18. Thorns also and thistles shall it bring forth to thee, and thou shalt eat the herb of the field. Why did God add herbs to mankind diet after sin? Because the herbs will now become our medicine. That is why it was added after the fact. Can you all close your cameras, please? Just a minute. I have to be stopping to close cameras, close cameras, close cameras. All right. Okay. <laughs> praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Let's keep your cameras closed. Keep your cameras closed. All right. So after sin, God added the herbs. Now the Bible doesn't use the word vegetables, it's herbs. Same thing, it's the vegetables. Why? The vegetables have been the, the, the phytochemicals, right? The chlorophyll. So it gives the body you now the magnesium and the iron. And we know we need the minerals for healthy blood. Because the life is in the blood. So when God says, whatever you eat, whatever you drink, all that you do, do to the honor and the glory of God. God is taking us right back to the garden. Right back to the garden. Now some persons will say to me, Dr. Debs, but they are spraying the vegetables with all the chemicals. Yes, they are. So, number one, start your own backyard garden. Number two, come together in your community and start a community garden. Number three, find an organic farmer um, and start buying from them. You can just throw your hands up in the air and say, everything poison." Me can't do nothing. Yes, you can. We have to be proactive, brothers and sisters. Jesus made a clear declaration in John 10, verse 10. Jesus told us, you know, the thief, Satan, the thief has come not, but for to kill and to steal and to destroy. 
When you walk in a supermarket, 90% of what is in there, the thief, come at not but to steal. He must steal him. He's stealing your money. You are taking your hard-earned pay and buying all these high sugary drinks and these processed things, poisoning your body. That's stealing. That's last stealing from you. And after he steals your money and, and, and tempts you into buying all this foolishness, then now your liver comes down, your kidney, your heart. Then he kills and he destroys. Then you go to the pharmacy you now and take the drug and finally put yourself in the grave. And everybody looking around the ball hole, oh God, why did my brother die so early and my sister? God did not call that. God told us in Ezekiel, Ezekiel 7. No, sorry, not Ezekiel. Ecclesiastes 7 and verse 17. There's a declaration from God in Ecclesiastes 7 and verse 17. Where God says to us, brothers and sisters on the platform, Be not overmuch wicked, neither be thou foolish. Why shouldest thou die before thy time? Oftentimes I hear people say, when their loved one died, Oh, you know, it was his time. It was his time. Well, because I read the Bible, and I understand the body, I know a full full taught that. Many persons are killing themselves before the appointed time. Ecclesiastes 7 verse 17. Neither be thou foolish, be not wicked. Why should thou die before thy time? Alright. So John Hopkins um, Hospital, they have done several tests. And they are showing that people who consume food... With fructose, these high fructose corn syrup, it causes you to eat more because it impacts the enzymes in your stomach that turns off the signal that said no more food. So you just eat and eat and drink and drink and drink and can't stop because it has become addictive, right? But there are many research coming out now proving this to be true. Increased fructose consumption is associated with fibrosis. Severity in patients with um no okay I'm just closing these cap boy I tell you when you stop any man I said close all the cameras close all the cameras all right okay now the reason why I keep saying close the cameras is because when we're watching by the video your camera open with your untidy bedroom and your uncomb here and etc it is very distracting keep your cameras closed. <laughs> Yes, Judy. I'm just going to host control and, 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 and um, click an icon and close our camera so they can't open the camera. Thank you. Did you hear that? I was thinking what I do the person advocate. Okay. Thank you, Jules. Going to host control yeah. and close all cameras so that they won't be able to open it. You heard that? Going to host control. Thank you, Jules. So research is coming out proving that these um these um high fructose stuff effects of high fructose diet on central appetite signaling and cognitive function doctors are coming out and saying the high consumption of fructose has increased tremendously over the last five decades the last 50 years during my lifetime during the lifetime, lifetime roger lifetime right it says which is to a large extent due to the development of high fructose corn syrup a commercial sugar additive that contains high amounts of free fructose the high fructose corn syrup is often added to processed food and beverages partly because it is a powerful sweetener but even more so because the production is cheap it's cheap it's easy to produce it also fructose in combination with fiber, vitamins, minerals are present in the fruits. So fruits have in fructose, but it has the minerals, it has the vitamins, it has the fiber with it, right? So when we separate them and create this con concoction, we're poisoning ourselves, brothers and sisters. In supermarkets, you'll find the juice concentrate. Watch it, they have boiled it and boiled it, right? Removed all the minerals and the water. It also poisons the body, right? 
We spoke about how sugar is made already. I showed in the video so I'm gonna skip over all of this, right? But we know the, the, the sulfur dioxide is added to it. It's bleached, right? The bone charcoal is added to it. And with that said, is molasses healthy? Well, the molasses has in some of the minerals in it, but remember at what stage the molasses is made. It's after all of these chemicals are added to the solution. So chances are some of the chemicals will be in the molasses. But the molasses is not as bad as the white sugar because it's bleached and it does have some minerals in it. So the brown sugar is not healthier than the white sugar. As you saw, all they did after they bleach and made the white sugar, they add back some molasses to make the brown sugar. So it is not, not necessarily healthier. What about Dr. Dave's, the beet, sugar, the beet, the sugar beet, the white sugar beet? Well, number one, the GMO beet is being used. Number two, it is boiled also. Number three, they also use it the anti-caking agents in it also. So I would say, no, I wouldn't consume it. What about stevia? Stevia is made from a plant. It has very little taste, no side effects, right? But stevia is 200% sweeter than the cane sugar. No abnormalities in weight change, food intake, cell or membrane characteristics, no enzyme are affected. No cancer. So technically, we're saying that the stevia, because it's not as processed as the sugar, can be consumed, but remember, in moderation, right? In moderation. When we eat fruits, which have in the fructose, it has in the fiber, it has in the vitamins in it, right? So the whole fruit is healthier than even the extracted fruit juice. So I don't make fruit juice at home. I simply drink my water, coconut water. I eat my fruits. So I get the whole fruit in its in its complete form, the way God designed it. Right? God says to Sister White, if you can get apples, you are in a good condition as far as fruit is concerned. You if you have nothing less. She says, I do not think uh, such large varieties of fruit are essential. In other words, don't pack up the plate with five or six different fruits, right? Yet they should be carefully gathered and preserved in their season for use when there is no apples to be made. Apples are superior to any fruit for a standby that grows. So apples are very healthy, right? If too much apple is in season at the time, we can process the apple and have it for the future use. In fact, if you have a dehydrator, you can dehydrate the apple, you know, and then have apple chips. So I dehydrate mango, I dehydrate my fruits and I have them to eat with my breakfast. It would be well for us to do less cooking and to eat more fruit in its natural state. So brothers and sisters, God has shared with you on the platform today the danger of consuming all of these processed things in the supermarket, right, with the corn syrup and the process sugar now you have to decide will you walk away from this platform and continue eating it destroying your body which is the temple of the holy spirit or will you give heed to the voice of god psalm 121 as i close psalm 21 verse 1 and 2 i will lift up my eyes unto the hills from when cometh my help my help cometh from the lord the lord which make it heaven and earth god wants us to be healthy no kidney disease, liver disease, cancer, all these diseases coming from eating these highly processed foods. Now remember, if you have any of these diseases, we do the health consultation. We don't charge a fixed fee anymore. We simply ask for a contribution of any amount. So you have no excuse not to call Dr. Debs if you are suffering from any of these diseases. The recipe book is available. And we now have the printed ones in my office. I brought in 30. They're in the van. Please go for them when I finish. So I brought in 30 copies of the Healthful Cooking book. Only 30, right? So you can get it at my office. It's 4,005 Jamaican dollars. Or you can buy it online at Amazon.com. 
over 230 recipes to guide you in preparing whole food plant-based meals. The cancer book is there. When faith in God is bigger than the fear of cancer, $6,800. Come on, brothers and sisters, do not wait till the MRI CT scan say so you have cancer. Come and learn how to prevent it. And that is the end of our presentation. Now, because I have my cousin online today, for, the, for a long time I have had her, Jones, I'm going to ask you to do the closing prayer first. Judy, are you there? All right, so Judy's not there, so she's not hearing me. All right, so let me come here and see who else I have on the platform who is a part of this ministry. Okay, okay, let's see. Uh, scrolling down. I have lots of person on the platform this morning. Praise the Lord. All right, okay, okay, okay. Sister Ronnie, can you do the closing prayer for us? All right, Claudia is asking me, how can you get a copy of the presentation? Claudia, thank you for that question. I am going to, hold on Ronnie, hold on Ronnie, hold on Ronnie. Claudia, the presentation will be uploaded to my YouTube channel in 30 minutes from now. So if you go to Dr. Deborah Williams' YouTube, the presentation will be there. It's also, we're, stream, we're live streaming on Facebook. So if you go to Facebook and type in Williams Deborah, it's also there. Praise the Lord. Before Ronnie pray, and you're welcome, Claudia. Any other question before Ronnie pray to close? Any other question? All right, praise the Lord. All right, Sister Ronnie, just give me one moment, please, before you pray. Let's go right back up here, so. All right. So please remember, as I said earlier, we are launching Cancer Causes Prevention Natural Remedies. You go to www.drdebshealth.com forward slash cancer. And everybody on the platform this morning should be registering for that course. Now remember, as I said, if you can't afford the contribution, because what I'm charging for this course, it's only a contribution. We have the essential package, it's 150 US. We have the advanced package, persons who are coming to the classes, it's 250 US. And we have those who have cancer and want me to work with them for 30 days for a month and write a program for them, that's 350 US. That is only a contribution. But if you are in any of the three categories and you can't afford all of that, I will do a discount for you. I'm turning nobody back, nobody. If you want to do the manual with a discount and you need help, simply call me at 876-878-8867 and I will ensure you are given a discount and that you're going to be at class. Nobody must be left out. All right, Sister Rooney, go ahead and pray. Close, please. Our Father, when you come before you, thanking you for the provision that you have made for all of us so that none of us will be left behind. None of us will have the excuse whenever our names are called upon to say we did not know. We are so grateful. We have sinned in that we have done things to this temple, this body that you have given unto us to cause harm unto our body. We ask your forgiveness. And now that we have been granted with knowledge, grant us wisdom, we pray, to move forward to do the right things. And not also for ourselves, but also to reach others around us. Go into our communities, into our churches, our families. Impart unto them the knowledge that are being parted unto us. And, oh Father, pray for them that they'll be able to accept the truth and move forward to do according to you. We ask for continual blessing upon Dr. Debs, your staff, and all the supporters of this ministry. Ears 
Because without the platform, without the errors, this program would have been no faith. So we are thankful for all those who find the time to spend, to listen, but rather also the most important to move forward and to do your will. We are so grateful. There are so many who has the desire to move forward to do this program, but they're saying, I, I don't have the first cent. We know that you make a way yes. at all times. Yes, Lord. So help us to do what we need to do. Dr. Deb says she'll work with each and every one. Help us to take her at her words. Yes. And we realize that you, who oh, the provider of Everything for all your children will make a way. All we have to do is to trust and to be and to have faith. Go with us as we have a few hours left for the preparation for the Sabbath. We ask that you will bless us to do our part, to be able to welcome you at those hours. Grant a blessing on our children or relatives, or families, or neighbors, near and far, for those who are suffering because of different reasons, war-torn years, we ask your blessing upon them. Help them to look to realize that there is a God, and this is not the end of, of all things, but you will be coming back for your people to put an end of all this destruction in this land. Bless us with prayers we need to pray. Whatever we are feeling asking you this day because of our limited knowledge, be able to grant it unto us as we say thank you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 Praise the Lord. Together, let the words of our mouth mm -hmm. and the meditation, and the meditation of our hearts be acceptable and accept. O Lord, our, our strength and our Amen. 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 Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Thank you, Sister Roni, for the closing prayer. Thank, thank you, Brother Roger, for the opening prayer. And thank you, everyone, for participating with us today. YouTube Live, we love you. God bless you all. Uh, Facebook, we love you all. God bless you. Have a wonderful rest of the day. And as Roni said, let us be ready to enter into God's holy Sabbath day at the set of sun this afternoon. Bye, everyone, for now. Until next week. According to God's grace, because we don't know if we're going to be here next week. But if in case we're here, let us come back together to learn to be empowered to go and help others on this pilgrim's journey as we all look forward and hasten the return of Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior. How do we hasten the return of Jesus? He told us, Matthew 24, verse 14, and this gospel of the kingdom shall be spread as a witness. Pick up the closing bit shall be spread as a witness to the world and then the end will come so we play a very important part in the return of jesus the gospel must go to the world everybody china india africa across this planet the seven continents everybody must hear this gospel of jesus christ so we pray for all the missionaries who are out in the field spreading the good news of our Lord and Savior. God bless all of you. Have a wonderful rest of the day. Bye bye bye. Thanks for coming. Thank you. You're bye. Nice bye. bye. Take care. Bye. Have a blessed day, everyone.